Hello and welcome to part six of my Gamera-a-thon. The previous movie in the series, Gamera vs. Gwiron, was one of the more... off-the-wall entries in the series. Yeah. Anyway, perhaps realizing how far they went last time, they dialed back the goofiness a little bit with the next entry in the series, Gamera vs. Jiger. I say a little bit. It is still a Gamera movie, after all. Gamera vs. Jiger is the sixth entry in the Gamera series and was released in North America as Gamera vs. Monster X, continuing a proud tradition of Americans giving Japanese monster movies some of the most generic titles possible. Oh well, at least they didn't try to trick people into thinking it was a King Kong movie like they did in Italy. And what the hell? Is this intro coming from Gamera's Haunted Volcano? <laughs> Okay, never mind. I guess the thunder and lightning's just there to show how much Gamera loves children. Oh, come on. Even the opening credits are using stock footage now. Can we cut to something else, please? Oh, God, a Kenny! Go back to the stock footage! This is our Kenny for the movie, Hiroshi. Although I don't know why I'm even telling you that, since from this point on, I will just refer to him as Kenny. Now's the part where I say this kid grew up to be Glenn from The Walking Dead. You know, because all Asian people in baseball caps look the same, right, Internet? Also, I think his dad might be Hitler. Will it really die or is this model a toy? No, it's a real miniature submarine. But the trouble is, it's too real and goes too far down. It shouldn't dive more than, uh, about three feet. Why would you have a sub that can't dive down far? Why have a submarine that doesn't dive down far? Hey, back off, kid. I do the nitpicking around here. Turns out the sub is just a ride that's going to be used for Expo 70. The sub ride may not be ready, but I see the Jeep ride is operational. Expo 70 was actually a real event held in Osaka, and if you're not familiar with it, don't worry. This movie goes out of its way to explain it. This is the Expo site. It'll be held from March 15th to September 13th, 1970, at Senri Hills in Osaka. Okay, is this a monster movie or a promo for Expo 70? I'm not joking. Several minutes of the movie are dedicated to just showing off the Expo. Over 70 countries are participating in it, and we have a chance to learn about their industries and culture and more than 100 specially built pavilions. Yeah, like the 8-track tape pavilion, the kidney stone pavilion, and the rejected Pokemon character pavilion. But I feel like we still haven't spent enough time on the Expo. Please, tell me more. The theme of the World Exposition is progress and world harmony. And in that spirit, here's a random African-y guy spouting gibberish. Wow, I'm learning so much about other cultures. Turns out this guy's upset about them taking an ancient statue to the Expo site, since moving it's supposed to unleash some kind of curse. Oh well, maybe a slideshow will calm him down. If we knew more about the Great Stone Age, many questions would be cleared up, such as the Mew Continent mystery. Hey, the Mew Continent isn't a mystery. Didn't you guys see Atragon? This guy does not look pleased. Is he alright? I think so, sir. What's Jagger? I don't know, but it's a way better name than Monster X, that's for sure. They begin moving the sacred traitor Vic statue, but are soon interrupted by Gamera, because even though he's a friend of the children, he is the enemy of cultural desecration. Gamera won't do any harm. He must be doing this to help us get the statue. Be still. You can't trust a creature like that. He must be killed. Well, the kids may have forgotten that Gamera slaughtered thousands of people, but at least the adults know not to trust him. Just how the hell are they going to stop him, though? Okay, so let me get this straight. Missiles, bombs, and tanks can't hurt Gamera, but small handheld rifles apparently can. Gotcha. I am really disappointed in the humans here. Not because they took the statue, mind you, but because they introduced the other two Kennys. It sent out fire, just like a volcano. Oh yeah, another weird thing, I think Caucasian Kenny's family is supposed to be British, but for some reason he's American. Now don't brush against it. It'll cause him to sneeze and toss us around in here. I don't know, I guess he's British in the same way Kevin Costner was in Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. That's crazy. Gamma doesn't attack people. It's true, Roshi. Gamma tried to kill us. Gamma must have had a reason for what he did. A way to blame the victim there, Kenny. Look, if a monster attacks you, it's probably your fault. I mean, how are you dressed? Did it seem like you wanted it? 
Despite the story of Gamera attacking people, Kenny remains convinced that something's not right. I hope there isn't a curse in all this. What does the word Jiger mean then? It means we have a monster. And hey, this one's slightly less goofy looking than the last couple. I say slightly because again, it is still a Gamera movie. And look, it's still early in the movie and Gamera's already fighting it. Or at least sticking his tongue out at it. Jiger shows off some of its powers, like the ability to play catch, and a jet-propelled neck. Yeah, that's pretty impressive, but everybody knows that's no match for Gamera's jet-propelled ass. Especially when Jiger just forgets it can fly in the middle of the fight. Gamera seems to have a good handle on things, so did he already defeat Jiger? That was a short movie. Turns out Jiger was just playing possum and exploits Gamera's weakness for getting turned on his back. Which I guess is the thing now that they forgot about the cold weakness he originally had. Jiger heads towards Osaka, but on the plus side, their shipment of Asahi Super Dries finally arrived. Looks like something's wrong with the crew, though. Doctor, tell me what could do this? It's difficult to find any cause at all. I'd say it's sort of like a curse. Uh-huh, okay. Uh, what are you a doctor of again? Yeah, that's right, Doc. When all else fails, just drink. But Jiger's got a prescription for you. Pain. You know, when I said Jiger was less goofy than the previous monsters, I think I might have spoke too soon, because seeing this thing fly is a whole new level of wacky. Looks like Jiger's busy destroying Osaka. Hopefully the news can give us some more info on it. Some people, the state authority, now designate this queer creature by the name Monster X. Why? You already know it's called Jiger. You even say that in the very next sentence. One report uses a new continent word, Jiger, meaning a devil. See? That is a way better name than Monster X. You might as well just call it Monster... eh, whatever. Not to worry, though, since Kenny here knows all about Jiger. Why? Because it's a Gamera movie. Of course he knows things for no reason. Listen, ages ago the Muse must have buried the monster and put the statue over it to keep it down. They must have done this shortly after their second war with Atlantis, which lasted from 8,000 to 7,000 BC. Jiger may be tearing up the city, but there's something even more important at stake. It'll go where the statue's going to now, into the expo site. And as soon as it's there, the creature will follow, and then smash the entire thing. Oh no, not the expo. I mean, all the innocent people Jiger's killing, that's one thing, but not the expo! And Gamera's still on his back? We've seen that he has hands, why doesn't he just pull those things out? In the meantime, I guess it's up to the military to try and stop Jiger. <laughs> Holy shit! If Jiger can do that, why didn't it just do that to Gamera right away? Oh, right, because then we wouldn't have a movie. Forgot. Speaking of doing things right away, turns out Gamera really could just pull those spears out with his hands. I guess he just wanted a little alone time. Unlike the previous movies, there's not a whole lot of stock footage here, although that's not stopping these guys from filming some for the next movie. <laughs> Jesus. Well, like I said before, these movies may be made for kids, but the death scenes are surprisingly gruesome. Gamera finally shows up, although I'm a little concerned about this guy's parenting skills. Where are you children going? Let them go, Miwok. Stay here. They'll be alright outside, cause Gamera's here now. Yeah, let the kids go near the giant battling monsters. What's the worst that could happen? Alright, Jiger, time for round two. You know, guys, hmm. it just dawned on me how, how weird this film is, you know? Yeah, It's really? just kind of goofy. Well, you knew I had to play that clip at some point. Gamera's got the upper hand at this point, but Jiger's got a few more tricks up its sleeve. Gamera! He's pulling him by suction! Uh, hey Jiger, I got an idea. Why don't you just use that disintegration ray you showed earlier? Or whatever, just give him some tail. He's hurt! What happened to him? What, did he get here before you did? Shut up! Okay, Gamera, I know that has to be painful, but could you try not to destroy even more of the city while you're running away? Wait, Gamera changes color when he touches water? Is he part Hot Wheels car or something? Well, looks like changing color caused Gamera's batteries to run out. Time to take these kids home. Let's go. You want that thing out there to murder you? I sure as hell want that! With Gamera out of commission, there's nothing that can stop Jiger's reign of terror, but let's not forget the biggest tragedy in all this. Hotel rooms and transportation reservations for Expo 70 are being cancelled. I don't mean one or two, but thousands. And the city got destroyed! I think that's a little more important than the Expo. 
And what the hell happened to the statue from earlier? That strange sound, Doctor, began coming from the statue about ten minutes ago. Listen! Okay, so the statue comes with a John Cage soundtrack. That means at least hipsters will like it. The sound baffles the scientists. Good thing Kenny's there to explain everything about it. Yet we both had to tell you there's a way to control this Monster X. The sound that caused one of his men there to cry out. You see, we feel the real reason it brings illness is it's poison. It's coated on the statue, and the sound can injure anyone who should then come and contact. That's how the new continent people long ago could use its force to hold the monster. Okay, will somebody dissect this kid's brain to find out if he's psychic? Because he really shouldn't know that. Nice that they have some info on Jiger, but I feel like they're losing sight of what's really important. You must let me know. The statue. You didn't tell your men to take it inside Expo. I mean, the orphanage Jiger destroyed earlier is one thing, but for God's sake, will somebody think of the Expo? And here's an idea. If Jiger's here because of the statue, why don't you just put it back? Oh well, let's see if they can figure out what's wrong with Gamera. As you can see, Gamera's interior, indeed his entire structure, seems like a giant reptile. Ah, so you're saying he's a turtle. Interesting. His lung has been infected by this dark shadow. It was something else then, and you'll see what I think it to be in a minute. You think he's got an elephant inside him? Okay, the real explanation is that when Jiger stabbed Gamera earlier, it laid some eggs which are now growing inside him. So basically, it's like Jiger got Gamera pregnant. Oh man, this is even worse than that one night stand I had with Mothra. As if that wasn't wacky enough, the Kennys decide to use their dad's submarine to actually go inside Gamera to get rid of the Jiger egg. No, no, kids, what are you doing? The sub was only designed to go three feet underwater, not a hundred feet up Gamera's colon. But hey, at least they remember to leave a note. Tell me, sir, are you sure that thing will go where they want it to go? True, absolutely, I designed it. Yeah, to be a ride at an expo. So of course it can go inside a fire-breathing turtle monster. What are their parents going to do? Papa and I are sorry to have made you worry like this. No, I don't think we should be worried about those two. Wow, even their parents don't give a shit about their safety. Although they did wrong, both of them displayed more initiative than we did. Yeah, they may end up dissolving in a giant turtle stomach acid, but at least their deaths will have shown initiative. So how's the Kenny's not-so-fantastic voyage going? Hey, the radio! Don't you think we ought to use it now? Mm. Nice that they turned the radio on, but we do not need to hear one of Hitler Dad's speeches right now. And it's a good thing the sub made for an expo ride was built with a tracking device. Does that show where they are? Yeah. According to our calculations, they're in Gamera's prostate. And I'd be careful about opening that hatch, kid. I will give Gamera this. For a giant fire-breathing turtle who farts rocket fuel, his insides are surprisingly hospitable. Do you know what exactly we're looking for? Anything strange, I guess. You're inside a giant turtle. Everything's strange. But uh-oh. Looks like Gamera and Jiger's love child hatched early. Let's go! Hurry! Run, kids! Or... Well, actually, you're probably fine. The thing looks pretty slow. Ew, I never wanted to know Jiger ejaculates from its nose. Previous monsters in the series have usually had some kind of weakness, whether it's water, sunlight, or, um, getting blown up. But just wait till you get a load of Jiger's weakness. What do you know? I think these creatures must hate transceivers. Wait, so Jiger's weakness is phones? Huh, <laughs> what do you know? I guess cell phones really do give you cancer. It's nice that you killed that thing, kids, but could you still get it out of there? Gamera probably doesn't want a dead monster inside him. The transceiver made the monster die. You're absolutely sure about that? Oh, yes. yes. But why should it? I think I can explain it. Hey, explaining things is the kid's job. So anyway, radio waves interfere with the monster's heat wave thingy, which causes it to die or something. I don't know, I really think I'm going to need an analogy here, Doc. This characteristic of the transceiver tends to weaken the monster, just as tropical people become weak when they go toward a northern cooler climate. And Eskimos react the same way to a warmer southern climate. Yeah, I think if you bought an Eskimo a ticket to Cancun, they probably wouldn't drop dead as soon as they got off the plane, but... Whatever. Sound kills Jiger, I got it. So with that information, they hook up a huge sound system and subdue Jiger with a sound even it's powerless to defend against. It was a toss-up between using Dragon Sound or John Michael Thor for that part, so screw it, I'm doing both.
There's also the small matter of Gamera still being frozen after his monster abortion, so they decide to restart his heart by hooking it up to a power plant, which also somehow decalcifies him. Whatever, I'm not gonna argue with science. But uh-oh, looks like something's wrong. There's been a blowout somewhere. Somebody exceeded the maximum power. Someone must have plugged in a hairdryer, sir. Jiger may be awake again, but fortunately, Gamera's there to save the day. Okay, just once can Gamera land without destroying something? Oh, for Christ's sake, would you forget about the damn expo? There's more important things at stake here! So now it's time for the climactic battle. Or at least it would be if the kids didn't keep interrupting it. Look out! The creature's about to put on his heat ray! Gamera hasn't seen his ray yet! I've been watching the same movie as you, kid. You don't need to tell me that. And come on, Jiger, is this any way to treat the mother of your now-dead child? The monster's really beginning to hurt him now. It might even rupture his eardrums. Gamera, you better protect your hearing! Why would a heat ray affect his hearing? That makes about as much sense as... pretty much everything else in this movie. Gamera does plug his ears, although I think that's just so he doesn't have to listen to the Kennys yapping anymore. You can do what I know you can! We believe in you! You've got to win this one, Gamera. You've got to. Okay, here's why Godzilla will always be better than Gamera. In a Godzilla movie, he doesn't have a bunch of kids constantly telling him what to do. Looks like it's time for Gamera to get revenge on Jiger for knocking him up earlier. Ugh. And the worst part? That's actually Jiger's penis. I think Gamera may have stabbed his brain with those telephone poles, but hey, at least he didn't overheat. Let's see if Jiger remembers that it can fly this time. Nope, it doesn't. Remembering that it was the statue that originally kept Jiger at bay, Gamera decides to go get it. So what's he gonna do, blow in it and kill Jiger with the sound or something? Damn, well that sure beats the hell out of a whistle. You know, when they said the statue was the only thing that could stop Jiger, I didn't think that meant you were supposed to stab it in the brain. Well, that's another foe brutally killed. Only thing left to do now is get rid of the body. Now what about the statue? It was meant to remain out there on the island. And Gamera will help us by returning it home. Uh, it was on the island to keep Jiger from escaping, and it's dead now. I think you can pretty much do whatever you want with it at this point. Return again! Oh, he will. I've still got two more movies left. Gamera vs. Jiger isn't quite as goofily entertaining as the previous movie, but it's still got its fair share of wacky monster action. Jiger may not be as weirdly memorable as some of the other monsters in this series, but the whole impregnating Gamera and going inside him subplot's definitely as ridiculous as anything else we've seen so far. The movie also uses far less stock footage than the previous two, Although I think I could have done without all the talk about Expo 70. I don't know, maybe the filmmakers thought Expo stood for exposition dialogue. This isn't the worst one I've done so far, and in a few areas it's even an improvement on the previous two. But would it kill these movies to just have Gamera fight the monster at the end without a bunch of kids yelling at him? Alright, I've got two of these movies left, and brace yourselves ladies and gentlemen, because the worst is yet to come. Well, that's all for now. Until next time. Ah!